All right, what is up everybody? I wanted to talk to you today about a game that has recently come out on mobile and on Steam. It's called Marvel Snap. I've been playing this game for about three weeks now, maybe. Um, I did get beta access through the APK and I've been playing this game a ton. I, uh, I literally can't put it down. I've been playing it like maybe like four hours a day <laughs> since I started playing it. This game is super addictive and just really fun. So what is Marvel Snap? Let's talk about that for a second. You basically have three locations and you need to win two of the three locations to win the game. The way you win locations is by putting more power there than your opponent. So anyone who's played Air Land C will understand what this game is. That's a, that's a, it's very similar to this game. Uh, it's a real life card game. However, Air Land C, you have a deck of 18 cards and each player gets six of them each round. In this game, you have a deck of 12 cards and you of course can build your own deck. So, let's talk a little bit about the basic mechanics of the game. We will do some gameplay in a minute and I'll go through everything, but just the really basics. Um, each card has a cost shown in the left and a power shown in the right. You have to have more power in two of the three lanes than your opponent to win the game. Each card also has an ability. There are a few cards without abilities, such as Misty Knight, who is simply a, a base card but generally speaking, almost every card has a unique ability. The idea of the game is to synergize these unique abilities in a way that causes you to have more power than your opponent in two of the three locations. So currently there's about 174 cards, I think, in the game. You can click here to show unowned as well. So this is all of the cards in the game. They are, of course, each based on Marvel characters. And as I said before, they each have their own unique ability. Apart from a, a few select, a few select cards don't have don't have any ability. All right, so as a mobile game, I feel like it would be remiss not to talk about the elephant in the room. Is this game going to be pay to win? And I'm very happy to say this game has no elements of pay to win. The only element that could even be remotely claimed to be pay to win is that you unlock cards through the collection level, which is here. So as you can see on the side, are these cards I've unlocked by climbing the collection level. This is the only way the game could even remotely be claimed to be said to pay, be pay to win, because you do have to level up your cards to unlock more collection level. But that is the only thing that leveling up your cards does. If you power up a card, it changes the visual effect of the card. In fact, I'll show you right now. Here is a Spider Woman card that I have. If I was to upgrade this to Uncommon, all that happens is the art style on the card changes. Like this. And I get plus one collector level for that upgrade. You get about one collector level for every 50 credits, except for the very first upgrade, which is one collector level for 25 credits. And then as you climb this collection level, you will unlock new cards. That is it. There is no pay to win. Once you have a card, that is it. The card does what it says on the card, never gets any more powerful. So obviously as a mobile game, I'm pretty hyped finally to have one that has zero pay to win in it whatsoever. Okay, so in Marvel Snap, rank is dictated by the number of cubes that you have. This is shown here. I currently have 155 cubes, which means I'm in the top rank of infinite. Every 10 cubes, well, every 10 ranks, because it's 10 cubes per rank, you're gonna unlock a reward each season. And then the final rank is 100 and you'll get a, well, it's been a card back so far, but it won't, won't guarantee be a card back in the future. This is the reason the game's called Marvel Snap. There is a mechanic in a battle where you can snap and then your cubes for the game will double. This is a pretty cool mechanic actually, because what this means is that you're playing for one cube each game. If you snap, you're now playing for two cubes. And if your opponent snaps, you're playing for four cubes. And on the final turn, that's gonna double. So it's gonna be two in a regular game, four in a game where one player snaps, and eight in a game where both players snap. The reason this is a cool mechanic is that because it's a card game, there's a lot of variance. Each of the locations also has a random effect. So there's a ton of variance in that as well. Um, this means that when you're getting, when you're getting uh, bad luck, you can simply retreat from the battle and not lose too many ranking points. If you're just having a bad, have a bad draw or whatever, you can just get out of there and only lose like one cube. But in a game where you have a close game or a game where you think you're gonna win, you can double up on your on your rewards. So yeah, I think it's a really cool mechanic. Anyway, let's uh, get into a game and I'll show you exactly how the game works. I'll over explain absolutely everything in the game so that you guys can understand what's going on. 
So here we are. This deck I'm playing, I've got it's called Handlock. That is a uh, that is a Hearthstone reference for anyone who doesn't understand that one. Uh, the basically the purpose of this deck is I'm going to play a lot of cards that give me more cards, and then I have a card called Devil Dinosaur that gets more power based on how many cards I have in my hand. So as you can see, here's the first location. It's Nidavellir. This is cards have plus five power when they're in this location. So the more cards you can put here, the better, basically. Uh, each location will be revealed each turn. So you have one new location revealed each turn for the first three turns. And these can have a big impact on how the game plays. So it does matter a lot knowing what they are. Uh, we'll click end turn because we have no one, one mana play. So our opponent has played Ant Man. This is a one mana, one power card with if you have three other cards, so if your location is full, you have plus three power. So it's a one four in a full location and a one one in a not full location. Uh, you can have up to four cards on each side of the locations. So the second location we've got is Shadowland. This is both players get a minus two character. So we both have a minus two ninja on our side. This here is the power that each player has. You win the game by having more high, well you get, win the game by having a higher number here in two places than your opponent. So anyway, let's talk about our deck a little bit. This is one of the core cards of my deck. This is a 2-1, but whenever a card enters my hand anywhere, except from my deck, so it doesn't count draw steps, it gets another power. So the reason this is good in the deck is because, as I said, it's a deck about adding cards to your hand. So this guy's going to grow quite a lot. We're going to put him down here in Nidvalir, where he's going to get plus 5 power immediately. Our opponent is also going to play a lot of cards here, but we're going to try and just outpower them with the, with the collector here. So our opponent has now played Lizard. This is a 2-5. But if your opponent has four cards, it gets minus three power. So this incentivizes us even more to play cards on this far left location. And then finally, the far right location, Monster Metropolis. The card with the highest power here gets plus three. So you want one big card in this location, generally speaking. All right, so my options here, I can play Sentinel, who is a two three that gives you another Sentinel in your hand, who also has the same ability. So you're just going to keep cycling Sentinels. Or I can play Captain America, who is a free free that gives other cards plus one in the location. Or I can play Nakia, which is a free one that gives my two leftmost cards plus two power. I'm planning to play this next turn, so I'm going to play this now, because it'll make this bigger. I'm going to play that next turn. This one is four six. You get a copy of the opponent's highest cost card in their hand. This is a really good card in this deck because it synergizes with the with the plan of the deck but it also gives you information about what your opponent is going to do. Now our opponent has played Carnage, which destroys all your other cards in the lane and gives you plus two for each destroyed. And he destroyed his minus two ninja. So that's a really nice play for our opponent. And then he's hit the snap cube. So now if I don't retreat on this turn, I'm playing for double the rewards. I'm obviously not going to retreat. We're going to play this game out so I can show you guys how it works. Uh, we probably, we have this Hulk. Hulk is simply a 612. He's just big. Uh, we'll probably play him in Monster Metropolis because he'll get plus three power almost certainly. So we're going to play White Queen over here. We're, start, we're trying to get to four in Nidvalir to reduce his lizard power and to guarantee that we win this lane. I'm reasonably confident we can just play a Hulk on Monster Metropolis to win that. So we don't need to worry too much about winning a second location because we're just going to Hulk it. Okay, so our opponent's biggest card in hand is Ultron. Ultron is six, eight. Make four one power guys at each other location. He has all he also has Kazar, which is four four. Other one cost cards have plus one. This is gonna combine with the Ultron, because everything Ultron makes is gonna cost one. So they're all gonna be two power. So he's gonna make two power guys everywhere with Ultron. So this is something I need to be aware of for next turn. In fact, if he Ultrons, this is gonna get plus two four six. So he's gonna be at ten power. That will still lose to Hulk, so we're still sticking with the game plan of fill this up, Hulk on the right, hope that Hulk is, is game winning. Uh, we have some other cards we can play here, so we might as well get this guy down because he costs 2 and he's 5 power, so that's super strong. We'll put him over here, and then we're going to play Captain America here because he gives all the others plus 1. This should guarantee us this left hand lane. This middle lane we're going to give up on. Normally it's, it's like basically impossible to win all 3 lanes, so you normally give up on one of them. And since our opponent was able to destroy his minus two ninja, I'm not confident we're going to win this. This card is very good in this location. This is a 0-5 double power at the location, but it becomes a 0-5. It becomes a fire set. It's a 0-0, sorry. So <laughs> this card is very good here. It's a 5-0, but it doubles your power at the location. 
But because he gets plus five from Nidvalier, it's a five five with double your power. So I'm no longer confident we're gonna win this. In fact, I think we probably lost this game. What's gonna happen now is he's gonna play most likely Ultron here and make two power guys everywhere else. So I can't make those two power guys because mine are gonna be one power. So I haven't got a lot of options here. Um, this is gonna be 10 against my eight. If I play my Devil Dinosaur in the middle, he's going to get plus two from every card in my hand, which is going to be five. So he's going to be 13, which will be against four plus six, ten. So I should be able to win this by one. And then I play Agent 13 here, which is a one, two, but gives me a random card. So it's not going to reduce the size of my Devil Dinosaur. This will put me to ten here, which will hopefully be a tie with his Monster Metropolis. Unfortunately, we are going to lose to the Nidvlir. The tiebreaker in the game is who has the most power overall. He's going to have a lot in Nidvlir, um, and we're not going to have enough in, in Shadowland to win that tiebreaker. So I'm pretty sure we're going to lose this one to the Iron Man, but we'll play the last turn and we'll find out. So he actually played Blue Marvel in Monster Metropolis, which I think means we win. No, not quite. It's close, though. It's close. You don't quite win. I'm not sure why he didn't just play the Ultron. That seems like it would have been better, but <laughs> there we go. So we win Shadow Lands with the Devil Dinosaur. Unfortunately, we do lose Nidavellir to the Iron Man and Monster Metropolis to the Khazar plus Blue Marvel. Um, because the Blue Marvel made this bigger, it made it a five. It now gets the plus three from the Monster Metropolis because it's now the same size as my Sentinel, which is what flipped it in his favor. Um, I don't think we could have really... We could have played... I don't think we could have played around that. I think the, given given the state of our hand, we should have not played in the left, is what we've learned here. Because Iron Man was too good in the left, and we don't have an Iron Man in our deck, and he does. All right, so there you go. There's a game of Marvel Snap. I've been really enjoying this game. I've been playing it an absolute ton. Uh, I am going away on holiday in two days' time, so there is going to be a reduction in my content. But when I get back, I'm planning to play a lot of Marvel Snap. Let me know if you guys are interested in, uh, in seeing more videos. Um, I probably will be producing some, some deck videos and so on for Marvel Snap, because like I said, I've been really enjoying it. And I really recommend you guys give it a try, because it's just, I think it's just a really fun, really fun game. And games are like five minutes long as well, so it's super quick, super fun, just really addictive. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you all next time.